hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about the Kelks booty. So if you're new to my channel or you just saw this pop up in your feed, hi my name is Kim and I love yarn and if you like yarn then you're probably going to like it here because we talk about yarn all the time. In this video though we're going to be talking about a certain pair of baby booties that I mentioned in this video. And this is because I am taking up donation of baby booties for a local organization. And in that video, I talked about a bunch of free patterns, both knitting and crochet, as well as a community post that is also linked in that video. But I'm going to link all that stuff down below as well, just to make life easy for you. But during that video, I had a question about these baby booties. And to be honest, when I first looked at the pattern, I was kind of confused on the construction of them. So we are going to look at that, and we're also going to talk about the cast on, which is a Turkish cast on. It may be new to you. If it is, we're going to get you through it. So grab your project, your cup of whatever, and let's get started. So this is a free pattern. It's really cute, and there's two versions. There's this whole version, which is the first one I made, and it's called the whole version because you literally make it, and it has this little bitty hole right here. I can't say that I love it. Can't say that I love it. So on version two, which is the second one, that's this one, we are making the no hole version, and I love it much better. There's there's no hole or gap there at the top of the booty, and I like it. There are little whole kind of eyelets right here where you have to do the rib section. I don't mind those. This whole, this is this, I don't understand what the whole purpose of that is. <laughs> but yeah, they're still cute regardless. So this set I use DK weight yarn and this set I use DK weight yarn. And you see the size difference? I did use a different needle on both. I used a two on this one and a four on this one. But I did that because I wanted it to be easy to be seen by you, the viewer. So the way these work up is you start at the bottom at the center of the sole. And if you look on this one right here, it's flat. And that is because I did it wrong. So we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it so it makes this garter on the bottom like you're supposed to. And it looks much nicer. But I went ahead and repeated it when I made the second one. And just consider it a designer element by me. I do like it better without the flat stockinette section because it should be all garter. And once you make the bottom, the garter piece, then you start working up the sides of this. And the way this little part around the toes is made is just by doing some decreases. It's a really, really nice pattern. And then it has a little bit of a rib section to hold it on baby's foot and then a little stockinette section to give it some roll. And I noticed that apparently I've pulled out my cast off. So I'll have to fix that later, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. So the way this starts is with a Turkish cast on, but I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see a little bit better and we can get this baby booty in the works. So for this, we are gonna be using this Yarn Bee Baby Bee. I chose the color Very Cute for this set. This is the Sweet Delight, is the base, and it is a DK weight, I believe. Yes, DK weight light. There is a total of 377 yards per four ounces, and this is a 60% acrylic and 40% polyamide. I think it's fun, and I only paid $3.17 for this, so... I am going to be using a US 2.5 three millimeter needle for this. Honestly, it's because what I grabbed first, and I think that's going to be a good um, needle size to work with this. I want these to be kind of negative E, so a little snug so they stay on. This yarn recommends using a four millimeter, but we're not going to do that. Or we want it to be a little bit negative ease. I did go ahead and wind some of the yarn in a cake because I am going to do these two at a time. I think it's going to be a lot easier for me and I just prefer that method. I'm also moving up my needle size to a three millimeter. I'm sorry, a US 3, 3.25 millimeter. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it has a longer cable. And when you do two at a time, 
A longer cable is your friend if you're going to do magic loop. And that is what we're doing is the magic loop method. Okay, so to begin these, we are going to do a Turkish cast on. A good alternative to this would be Judy's magic cast on. It's going to kind of give you the same look, but the pattern calls for the Turkish cast on. So it's so easy. That's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by making a slip knot. I just lay the yarn across my hand like this and I wrap it around my pointer finger. I take the end with the tail and I make an X. And then I just slide that over and slide that on my needle. I like to use, I like to leave a five to six inch tail for weaving in. And we're going to take our needles and put them parallel. And then we are going to wrap the yarn. So you want to start coming from the bottom and wrap it over. And you want to do this however many stitches you need for cast on. This is a free pattern and I'm going to link it down below. So you're going to need to refer to that for copyright reasons as far as the whole pattern's directions. But it does tell you to cast on 18 stitches for a total of 36 stitches for each needle. But for this cast on, you only have to wrap the yarn 18 times. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You wanna make sure that they are nice and laying next to each other and not crossing on the front. And they'll be the same way on the back. And I'm going to use a binder clip to hold this together while I cast on my second set of stitches. I'm gonna slide them down my needle so I have plenty of room. And now I'm going to get the tail end from my other thing of yarn. Make a slip knot the same way. Slide that to the top needle. This yarn is very splitty, but it's fine. Tighten that up, slide it down, and wrap. So now we have 18 wraps for each one. And that is gonna give us our 36 stitches. The magic of this is all you do is you turn so that the bottom needle becomes the top needle and the top needle becomes the bottom needle. And then we're gonna start with our directions. Now this is where I messed up on these. So we're gonna do it right this time. When I did this pair, I just started knitting in the round, a whole round, and that is what gave me this flat section in the middle of the sole of my booty. That is actually not what you're supposed to do. It tells you to purl the first 18 stitches. So we're just gonna purl this one side, and then we're gonna start on round one on the second side. So we're gonna do this by sliding out the bottom needle, and that binder clip should keep everything where it's supposed to be. And we are going to start by purling. So I'm gonna pull the yarn so it was from behind like this, and I'm gonna pull it so it goes in between the needle and the cable. And I'm just gonna purl these 18 stitches on this top needle. It's really fidgety at first. You just gotta trust the process. I'm doing my best to keep this in view. This is why I don't make a lot of tutorials. I am not the best at it and I don't have my camera anymore that I used to use because it died and all I have is my phone. Maybe one day I'll be able to invest in a new camera and then this will be a much easier process. Now we cast on the 18 stitches but we also have this slip knot 
And this slip knot would actually make 19 stitches, but we only need 18. So I'm just going to purl these two together. So we have the 18 stitches. Now I'm going to do the next one. So move my binder clip. And this is where it can kind of get crazy because it's trying to really already turn on me. So I'm just going to count one more time to make sure I have the amount of stitches I'm supposed to have on this top needle. I do. So I got my yarn coming out from the back and I'm just going to pull it in the front between the needle and the cable and begin purling my 18 stitches. Purling that together and then I can t tighten that tail and clean that up some. Okay, so we have the first part of our pattern. You should have purled 18 stitches on both of them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this so that the needle that is on the stitches already is going to be our bottom needle. And then the one we just used is going to be our top needle. So you're going to pull the cord so you get that top needle in those stitches. You just have to kind of work it in there sometimes because it likes to catch on the joins on some needles. So now when you have that done, we're going to take out the bottom needle and it's going to be our working needle. We're going to get our working yarn and now we're actually in the directions of the pattern. And we have our 18 stitches and we're going to knitting that first stitch. Make sure you're knitting with the actual yarn that's attached to your skein because I'm going to add a outtake at the end of this where I was knitting with the tail. <laughs> and that's not what you're supposed to do either. So then you're going to knit your front and the back. And we're going to knit our 14 stitches. So the reason it has you do this is this is going to give you garter on both sides. Or it should. I think according to the pattern we're trusting the process so now we've already completed the first side of round one but it says twice so now we have to do this back side so we're going to repeat the process of knitting one knit front and back knitting 14 and now I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, so that completes round one for both booties. I'm going to go ahead and slide my needle back in. This is one of the main reasons why I do not like doing magic loop because it's just so much cable maintenance and it drives me crazy because I feel like you're just losing so much valuable time. So now I'm going to play leapfrog again with my yarns, taking one, putting it over the other, sliding the other one out of the way. Now we see that the yarn is coming from the bottom, so we're going to pull that needle out, and we're going to be working on the top needle. And this is also where we're going to be starting round two. And so we are going to do that. So again, I'm taking the yarn, let me give you some zoom in action, and I am pulling it between the working needle and the cable and I'm going to purl all 36 stitches on both booties. So we're back with the second part of our booty. We've got all of our garter done and you can tell it looks really nice. We've done it correctly this time. There's no flat stockinette section like in the previous one and the reason we had to use that knit front and back if you're a newer knitter is because the knit front and back actually creates a little bit of a garter bump and so it makes it hide seamlessly in your work and that is why that increase was chosen to use for that section. Now for this section, I'm going to grab some stitch markers. I grabbed these. Gina from the Knitting Turnpike had sent me. They are from Hand Stitched Life. Beautiful notions for the modern maker. And these are these just little jump rings with a cute little bead on them. But I'm going to use those to help make this process a little bit easier for me and so that I can knit on autopilot. 
So we're going to ready our work, make sure the yarns are where they're supposed to be, and we're going to start knitting. Now on round 11, you do knit one round around, and I have already done that. So go ahead and knit all the way around on both of your booties, and this meet back for round 12. Round 12, we are going to knit 16, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with these stitch markers to make life easier. Okay, so we knit our 16. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And we're going to place a stitch marker. Once you place your stitch marker, we're going to begin our first decrease. And what we're going to do is slip, slip, knit. So we're going to take the working needle, slide it into the front leg of the stitch, slide it all the way over and off the left needle, slip, treat the second stitch the same way, insert your working needle to the front leg of the stitch slide it off to the working needle so now we're going to take our left needle and we're going to slide it in between the legs of both of those stitches so that it comes to the front like that we're going to yarn over the working needle on the back and we're going to pull that through and slide those off and we've done one decrease now our instructions are to knit 20 so we're going to do that and it should be that you have 10 stitches on one side if you're doing yours two at a time and 10 on the other two four six eight ten so when i get around to this back side i will complete that but now we have to do the first section on the other booty I do want to note that I did put stitch markers right here and I do that just so that when I am knitting and I see that right there, I know that's the beginning of the round. It's just a visual reminder because I like to knit while I'm watching TV and I need those. So now we're going to repeat the process over here, starting off with our knit 16. I wanted to make sure I clarify something when you do this second section and you knit your 16, you put your stitch marker, you do your SSK, you knit your 20, you do your second decrease, and then you put your stitch marker, and then you knit your 16. Every time you do your decreases, they're gonna be in between the two stitch markers. When I showed this, when I put it on a DPN, it's a little bit easier to see it, but you can see where these stitches fall in the middle, and the rest are on the other needles. And now we can flip leapfrog with our yarns. Now we're completing the back side of our booty and what we're going to do is we're going to knit the 10 because we have to finish that middle section of row 12. We're going to place another stitch marker and now we're going to knit two together. So you're going to take you're working a needle and you're gonna place it into the front legs of two stitches at one time, yarn over and pull through. So this is gonna make a leaning decrease that leans to the right, where your slip slip knit makes a decrease that leans to the left. And that is what's gonna form this little section right here. So now we should have 16 stitches to knit. Let's count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. We do. So we are going to just knit those all the way down till we get to the second one. And now we are on our second booty and we are going to complete it by doing the same thing we just did. We're gonna knit the 10 place our stitch marker and now we're going to do our decrease by I always just kind of turn my working needle so they're kind of parallel and then it makes it easier to slide into those two legs and now we're knitting our 16 so that completes a row 12 for our booties I do want to note a couple of things about this pattern. Number one is in this section, it is different from the previous section or the previous section we had 
even rows where we had to repeat a stitch. We do not have that, so be mindful of that. Again, for the pattern, you need to look down below and go to the designer's download link via Ravelry, as this is not a tutorial for the whole pattern, just a little overview to help a viewer. And that's it. So thank you, Lori, for the question and allowing me to hopefully kind of make it a little bit more clear for you and show you how to do the cast on and whoever else might need to know how to do that cast on who's never done it. And yeah, it's actually a really, really cute pattern. And it's really, once you make it one time and you kind of see it, it's one of those that you can really go auto, on autopilot with. I do want to give a couple of pointers though. When you start the second section, you need to be mindful that there's not a break row. So on the first section, rows 2 through 10, all your even rows, you have to do a certain stitch all the way across. Refer to the pattern for that. But on the second section, it's not that. Each row is something different. So make sure that you really pay attention. If you're making one and you want to make the other, but you don't have your pattern with you, really the only thing that's different is where it starts on row 22. And that determines if you make the no-ho version or the with a hole version. So it's pretty easy if you just have half a pattern with you and you get to that point. Also, I do want to mention that when you do this section, when you do the second section, if you want to do it on DPNs, the easiest way that I found that I can really do it completely on autopilot, put the first half of the stitches on one needle, then the stitches that include the decreases and the ones in the middle of the decrease, put it on a separate needle. And then the last set of stitches, put them on the last needle and then just have a fourth needle for your working needle. And that way, you know, whenever you get to anything on this center DPN, you're going to do a decrease, knit those stitches, decrease, and then go around. And that's going to form this little flap for the faux toe, I guess you can say. And I found that to be super beneficial because I was able to knit on these during yesterday's cake sale at our church and I took some footage and it was so loud and crazy. It was amazing to be. It was the first time I've ever been to that at that church because this is kind of a new word to us church that we joined back in November and all the proceeds went to help put the kids in summer camp. It was so much fun. It was so many great goodies there. It was really hard not to try to pin on everything but I was able to listen and watch and knit on these just by knowing which stitches were on what needle and by feel. So, um, hope you check this out. If you do want to send me some baby booties for my drive, as always, all my information and contact info is down in the description box below. And I hope you have a wonderful week. I was knitting with my tail and this friends is why I do not do a lot of tutorials. Please hold.